Yeah, this photo right here pretty much sums up my attitude and seriousness toward photography for the last 10 years. <laughs> a Contax T3 empty vodka bottle as a tripod shooting who knows what, something. <laughs> and my buddy looking over me so I don't fuck it up. I started photography, I bought my camera off skin, Philips, around 2000, we're on a filming trip uh, in Miami for Sorry video at the time. And um, before that I made pictures with a school camera on the seventh grade, and fucking around in a dark room and stuff. Never developed my own film or anything like that, but just got into printing a little bit. From seventh grade up until 2000, whatever years those were, the 90s. I didn't touch a camera, and I bought an FM2 off skin with a, I believe it was a 16 to 35 lens. I think I still have the camera body, but I don't have the lens anymore. It got thrashed along the way. I think I carried that around for like two years religiously, and then the next thing I bought I think was an X-Pan, and this thing is it's seen some time. It barely works and you can't even turn it on. It's like gotten so jammed and haggard. It's gone through war. It happens to be so that in the last two months that I've gotten, gotten a little bit back into film, and shoot like carrying a Leica around because they are one of the best cameras in the world and uh, obviously huge influence on other, you know, other photographers. Always see Greg Hunt carrying one around, Tobin, skins black and whites. I like making big prints. The only thing about it is it's they're terrible to handle. Look at that. Scott Oster popped up. Legend. It's probably one of my favorite escape pictures I've shot in the 10 years that I've been shooting photos of traveling, landscapes, people, skateboarding, different stuff. But this is definitely one of my favorites. It's just upside down, over the hip. It does these rad slashes up the, up the wall. You know, there's ones where he's even more upside down, but I dig that one. Yeah. Been a little homesick lately, so we're gonna have a look at the Finland folder and see what we come up with here. It's been so long since I've been in Finland. There's a contact sheet of the shot. It's a woman on a boat and a bird. It's a dock that goes out to the lake. And my friend's grandpa built these two weird light posts around the Second World War. That's probably shot around midnight or one in the morning. And the sun's that high in the summer, midsummer. The sun never goes down in Finland. So you get six hours of, or three hours of sunset and three hours of sunrise. And no dark. The coolest looking light the whole summer. And then it just goes black. This is a photo of my grandpa, and this is probably what I'm gonna end up looking like with three stripes, Adidas, sweater with a leather cap on at the age of 70, <laughs> with a white beard. At least I hope so, I'll be looking like this. Um, my good friend Yoon shot this photo with his snapshot. Actually, I didn't shoot this photo. The Contax T3, I believe it was. T T2, Contax T2, 35 mil. Probably 400 speed. One of my big inspirations is this guy right here. So I put a photo of him up. So this is where my office was before, so that's why it looks like an absolute mess in here. There's some shit in here. This is a pretty cool one. I shot with the X-Pan, south of Spain. Might have made it to one of the mags, Euro mags or somewhere. It's my friend, friend Audrey doing a, a, a stale fish wall ride, kind of a slasher thing over this weird painting. That was one of the panoramas. I was super into shooting panoramas for a while while I was carrying the Hasselblad around. I gotta get this picture to him. He's in Spain and I haven't been there for a while. 
Can I get this done? So I've always had this thing for nature. Coming from Finland, I guess it's like, it's one of those things that it's so barren and open and gnarly, but soothing at the same time, like wide open nature where it's just like nothing else. No, no one's touched it or barely any man has walked. It's a whole different type of photography. A landscape, you really have to, you want to do it alone most of the time because you don't want, you just got to, you have to make the picture in your head and wait for God to create the right lighting, you know? You can't, you can't light up a Grand Canyon with a couple of Chromes and pro photos. <laughs> so you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta wait for that right moment, you know, when, you know, you gotta know what you're looking for kind of thing, so. I, I think that's why landscape photography more, for me is kind of rad, because it's more of a, a peaceful type of approach, I guess. I mean, I haven't really given photography much thought. It's just kind of been an outlet of traveling, skating, and just shooting stuff. So I never put any effort yet into publishing anything. Well, and I guess that's the whole point of it, is that you want to share it with the world and not just hoard it to yourself into a box, is what, what I'm doing right now. Honestly, I couldn't tell you where I've been in the last 10 years. I've been here, I've been there, I've been gone, I'm back. Well, now I got all these piles and piles and negatives everywhere, and digital files and photos and things. And I just too busy shooting lately. Lately, which means the past ten years. 